What's up, New Era Jags? It's your boy Nick coming at you with a preview for the Jags' week one game against the Washington football team. And that's what I'm going to call them because their new name is bullshit. Uh, before we get started, I want to say this video is brought to you by Pebblehead. Um, I'm not sponsored or anything. I just think it's a great beer. Um, but anyway, to the football aspect of things, uh, I'm going to start with the uniform prediction. Uh, my guess, if I had to guess, I think that Washington's probably going to come out wearing white. It's probably, I would assume it would be a warm, humid day up there in Washington. So they'll probably come out with white and Jags keeping it classic with that teal on white. Uh, but to aspects of the game that actually matter, uh, let's talk about the uh, Washington offense. You know, they're coming in with a new quarterback, Carson Wentz, who was familiar with Jacksonville after getting his ass kicked by us week 18 and losing their chance to make it in the playoffs for the Colts last year. Uh, Carson had 27 touchdowns last year. I mean, he wasn't terrible, but this is his third team in seven years. Um, I'm not a big uh, Carson Wentz believer. I'm also not a huge skeptic. I think he's kind of a middle of the pack, but he could be a little bit rattled. Um, you know, on paper, I really like how we match up against Washington. And I know that Washington fans are probably saying the same thing about us. But, I mean, let's let's look at it. Like, on paper, their wide receiver room, it's a lot better than ours. I'm, I'm just going to be honest. I mean, they got Terry McLaurin, who's coming off a 1,000-yard receiving season. He had five touchdowns last year. They got Logan Thomas at tight end. He only played in six games last year, but he is a pretty good receiving threat for them. You know, they have uh, Jahan Dotson making his NFL debut. And um, Curtis Samuel, he only played five games for them last year, too. I mean, they have a pretty nice receiving squad. Not to mention they got Antonio Gibson coming off of a 1,000-yard rushing season for them. So on paper, I mean, offensively, they look pretty good. Uh, I like the way our defense m matches up against them, though. I think that our front seven is going to be our strong suit for this team. Uh, historically, Jacksonville has always been kind of a defensive team. And I think that trend is going to continue this season. We, you know, we got Josh Allen. He's going to be the guy. Uh, he's coming off seven and a half sack season last year. I think that he needs to take that step up. I, I you know, he's got to get double digit sacks this year. And I think with the addition of Trayvon Walker, Foley Fatakasi, I hope I said his name right. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, a couple of the other guys we have, I think that would help him get more consistent pressure in the backfield. You know, last year it was only him and, you know, Smoot, really, that are, that are the consistent uh, pass rushers guys because, you know, Chase on is worthless for us. Um, and, you know, we got a revamp, revamp linebacking core. You know, Devin Lloyd, pick 27. I... I Love this guy. I'm really excited to watch him play. Um, uh, Foye Olokun. Hopefully I said his name right too. Uh, he he almost had 200 tackles last year. Uh, he's going to make an immediate impact for us. You know, you got Chad Muma, who's probably going to end up getting the starting nod uh, come week one. Uh, just because he's had a little bit more consistent playing time in the preseason due to Devin Lloyd having that hamstring injury he had to deal with. Um... As far as the secondary goes, uh, we had pretty much the same exact secondaries last year returning outside of Andre Sisco, who I think is going to be a dog for us. I mean, he's a natural ball hawk. Uh, he is a consistent, he's a solid tackler. He's very solid in, in tackling. Uh, you know, we have Tyson Campbell coming in for year two, and I think he's going to turn some heads this year. He's People are going to realize who Tyson Campbell is this year. You know, I talk to other people and I say Tyson Campbell is that dude. And they have no clue who he is. I mean, and that's just part of playing in Jacksonville. A lot of people don't care. And it, it's a little frustrating, but I think he's going to take that Jalen Ramsey type leap in year two. Uh, I'm not saying he's going to be Jalen Ramsey, but I will. I'm saying he's going to take a significant step forward in year two. I mean, a lot of reports out of camp. He's got a lot more confidence, a lot more swagger. He's talking shit. You know, he's doing his thing. I, I, he is going to make plays. Um, so I think he's going to be the guy that really lines up against uh, Terry McLaurin. I think he's going to have to do his thing against him. The question is really, uh, is Mike Caldwell going to be able to call some good defenses? Is he going to scheme well? Are we going to be predominantly in man coverage? Are we going to be predominantly zone? Are we going to do mixed match defenses? What are we going to, what are we going to do? What are we going to call up? Um, I, I mean, 
this is week one. This will be a good test for us to see where we're at. I think Washington, they're not, I don't think they're a terrible football team, but I don't think they're a good football team either. I see them as kind of like a middle of the pack kind of uh, uh, team. I mean, they have the benefit of playing in the worst division in the NFL, in the NFC East. So that kind of helps them look a little bit better than they really are, I feel like. Uh, but let's be real. The same can be said about the AFC South. Um, I I really like how we match up against them defensively. Now on the offensive side for Jacksonville, that's the biggest question mark. That's what every Jacksonville fan wants to know. How are they going to look? Um, I mean, we have a completely different wide receiving room this year than we did last year. I mean, and it's no surprise that they were the worst wide receiver room in the NFL. I mean, I, I never want to see that kind of offensive production put out onto the field ever again in my life on any level. It was just, it was, a, it was offensive. Let's be real. It was, I was offended. I, I couldn't stand it. I got pissed drunk every day, every game watching them. Um, but Washington's defense, I mean, their secondary, they're not the strongest either. I mean, I think they were like the 26th ranked secondary last year, something like that. Don't, don't quote me on that, but the, it'll be a good gauge to kind of see where they're at coming into this season. Um, you know, they, Kendall Fuller and William Jackson corners for for Washington really weren't great. They, you know, they allowed a lot of uh, receptions. They allowed a, a high passer rating against them. They do have a pretty good uh, safety in Bobby McCain. He had four picks last year. He had a pick six, uh, coincidentally covering Evan Ingram, who is now a Jaguar. Um, so it'll be interesting. They will be without Chase Young uh, for the first month of the season. But that doesn't mean that they don't still have some dogs on the defensive line. You know, they got um, Montez Sweat. You know, he had five sacks. He only played 10 games, and he had five sacks. Uh, they got Jonathan Allen, who's coming off a nine-sack season last year. And Deron Payne, he had four and a half sacks last year. Um, so it's, it's going to be a good test for our offensive line, too, which is another question mark for Jacksonville. You know, how is the offensive line going to hold up? Uh, I really think that we've got about... 40 to 60 percent of an offensive line built and that's kind of being generous um reports are saying cam robinson has been looking good in camp uh i don't think he's let trayvon walker beat him once i think he's been she was shutting down josh allen in camp so i mean now that he finally got paid hopefully he can actually start playing like he got paid um and then obviously there's the the right tackle battle between jawan taylor and walker little who's gonna end up winning it um and, and Jags fans are not going to like this, but I think they're, they're, the coaches are going to give the nod to Jawan Taylor, uh, just kind of just because he's got that experience on him. And, you know, reports out of camp are saying that Walker Little and Jawan Taylor are really neck and neck. And Jawan is going into what? His fourth year. And Walker Little is going into his second year in a new position in his first year in a new position. And with them being neck and neck, that really uh, is a good sign for, for Walker Little. I think he will definitely end up getting the start, starting nod uh, sooner or later in the season. Uh, he still has a little bit of adjust adjustments to make, but I think he's going to be a solid uh, player for us. He's going to eventually get the starting nod later in the year. But, uh, you know, everybody knows Trevor Lawrence's pocket presence is Im immaculate. He does a really good job at making the offensive line look better than they really are. So it's going to be one thing to to look for. Uh, another thing is how is the chemistry going to look between Trevor and his receivers? You know, it's going to be week one. So expect a slow start. I mean, it happens at every level of the game. I mean, be, from Pee Wee to the NFL, week one, slow starts. You still got kinks to work out. Uh, you know, it's, it's hot. You know, you might not be in, in the uh, same condition, same conditioning as you would be in the later in the season. Um, so don't expect them to go down the field and score right away if they do fucking great but me personally i'm not expecting it um and who's going to be this the starting running back is it going to be james is it going to be travis etn i mean james robinson needs he's going to be playing he's coming back off a torn achilles um so uh, really is how is he going to look that's another question you know i predict that he's probably going to have somewhere between 8 to 15 touches 
I think Travis Etienne is going to get the bulk load of the carries. I think Snoop Connor might get in on a couple third downs or a couple, you know, short yardage situations. Um, and really, that's going to be the key for us. If we can establish a run game, that's going to go miles for Trevor. If we can establish a run game, Trevor can find Christian over the middle, just in the slot, just doing his thing. I think that um, it, it'll look well. But that doesn't mean that uh, Washington has pushovers, you know, on their defense. I mean, they have a pretty good linebacker in Cole Holcomb. I mean, he had 142 tackles last year. He had a sack. He had two picks and two forced fumbles. Uh, I mean, he's a dog. But that's going to be the difference right here, right there, is who's going to win the turnover battle. I mean, realistically, I, I, I see Washington and Jacksonville being very even teams, and it's really just going to come down to who makes the plays at the end of the day. You know, I mean, I don't know if anyone has watched the NFL preview that they put out for this, but I mean, six out of the eight so-called experts chose Jacksonville to win the game. So uh, I'm siding with the so-called experts. I think Jacksonville uh, should win this game. Now, I mean, obviously anything can happen, but uh, as long as Trevor plays a good game, I fully expect him to take a leap up this year, a, a tremendous leap. Uh, and our defense causes some turnovers. I'd love to see a Tyson Campbell pick, or I really want Andre Sisco to be a dog. And I, I, I fully think he will be. I want him, I want to see some turnovers made. If we can get a couple turnovers in week one, then it's going to be, you know, a good sign for our defense. I think they're going to be the strong suit. Again, I'm going to, I think they're, they're going to be the, the to carrying the torch for this team this year. Um, but with that said, I'm super excited for this season. I know y'all are. I'm fucking ready. Let's get fucking to it. New Air Jags, let's get it.